welcome once again to the Gaming After 40 video podcast. When I first saw the early home pawn units as a kid, I always wondered how the heck does an electronic device get an image onto a TV screen in the first place? It basically has to generate its own TV broadcast on the fly. Let's take a look at the nitty gritty details. A vintage black and white TV broadcast works like a very fast fax machine. A camera scans an image at one end and converts incoming light to a signal, which gets delivered to a receiver over the airwaves, wires, or satellite, which displays it on a cathode ray tube painted with phosphor that glows brighter when more electrons hit it. The rhythm of generation and decoding happens in real time, but there is some structure to it. The TV has to be able to tell when a new frame is starting, no matter when the set is turned on, and stay in sync with the incoming signal to avoid vertical picture rolling. It also takes some time for the electron gun that paints the image to reset to the top of the screen for each new frame. The original NTSC television standard divided the image into vertical scan lines. There's no inherent limit to the number of pixels across a horizontal line, it's a modulated analog signal, but there's a fixed vertical resolution of 480 lines. The old broadcast standard doesn't really display full images either. It requires 60 fields per second, each of which contains half an image. The odd scan lines are painted on one pass, and the even lines on another. So 30 complete images are displayed each second, but 60 fields are drawn. This is because early picture tube phosphors faded quickly. So to maintain even image brightness from top to bottom, it was important to paint the whole screen often enough to keep the image stable. Early video games worked on much the same principle. There was no microprocessor or video memory in the early ball and paddle games, so the system had to draw each frame in real time, generating 60 interlaced fields per second, one scan line at a time. In fact, video game pioneer Ralph Bayer figured out how to put a picture on the screen before it was cost-effective to route sound to the TV. Early Odyssey models emitted simple blips from the console itself. Generating a simple Pong image is actually fairly complicated and requires careful timing. The system has to keep track of two paddles, a ball, and a dividing line. The line is easy to handle. It appears from top to bottom, so the circuit just has to generate white at precisely the same time while drawing each scan line. The paddles have a fixed horizontal position, but the vertical position changes, so a counter of some kind is used to turn the whiteness on and off based on the scan line being drawn. The ball is the most complicated to handle as it moves in both dimensions, but it's a simple rectangle and is in a fixed position in any given frame, so a combination of scan line timing and counting accounts for it. Color is even more complicated, but the NTSC color standard was designed for backward compatibility with black and white television. It's treated like a JPEG image, a detailed black and white image with less detailed color overlaid on top. This works because human vision is not as sensitive to color as it is to basic detail. Post-Pong video game consoles with microprocessors added hardware to handle the image generation based on data stored in memory, which freed game programmers from worrying about timing considerations within a scan line. It's still important today to maintain steady frame updates, however, as gamers are quick to notice sluggish or uneven updates and tearing when the image gets updated while it's being displayed. TV has changed a lot since the early days of video games. Modern HD TVs are capable of displaying higher resolutions with 720 and 1080 scan lines, and can also display progressive images, a full frame on each pass, like film, so the new ATSC standards no longer require that the image be interlaced. This allows games to run at 60 true frames per second, avoiding the scan line artifacts that appear when an element of an interlaced image is moving quickly. Video game graphics have come a long way since the 1970s, but it all started with getting that first dot on the TV screen. This has been the Gaming After 40 video podcast. Thanks for watching.